Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 394 at scavengerlife.com. We are in a very snowy Virginia. Yes. I'm sure people that live in places where it actually does snow like all the time, they would not think it's a big deal. But we got, what, about four inches of snow? Yeah, it's about four inches. So I had to go and uh, shovel the driveway. And not at, our driveway. Over at one of our rentals so the people could get out. That was very nice of you. Yeah. And it saved us some money from having someone plow it. Good exercise. You yep. really must have been working. Good. But I'm a... Definitely a little tired now. Um, Yeah. Okay, let's talk about eBay. So our week this week, we had a decent week. But I really, you know, it is now officially holidays are over. Yeah. It's like mid-January. We did not have great sales over the holidays, you know. I kept waiting and waiting, and there were like two weeks when we did really well, when it just felt like people were really buying. And now we're just back to just like normal, everyday sales. Yeah, I don't know. It yeah. was nothing spectacular. Yeah, and you know, and this is when you you know everyone can go down the rabbit hole of is it your individual store having a problem? Is it eBay itself? Is it like Google not you know categorizing eBay? Uh-huh. Is it is it the the greater economy? Is it the economy? Because yeah. there's like you know weird politics happening and like everyone shut down. I mean, you know, yeah, like, yeah, no one knows. All we know is we made enough. To pay our bills, and that's that's good enough for us. That works. So a couple things. Uh, eBay item assistant. We've talked about this. Unpaid s- item assistant. Unpaid item assistant. Yes. So I could not figure out how to do it less than four days. Because manually, if you just do it on your own to open an unpaid item, you can do it at two days. 48 hours, you can do it. But the seam store... The Seam Store username, Seam Store, um, told me that I had to go in. It's a buried uh, site preference. You know, wherever your site preferences are, uh, you turn off allowing buyers to combine payment uh, up to three days or something on if they do like a multiple order. So you turn that off and then... That allows you to have the unpaid item uh, assistant open after two days. I mean, how would you ever know that? If he hadn't have told us that, how did he know that? I don't know. Just eBay, it's like when we talk about eBay, like half of it is from the 90s because those site preferences pages are definitely. You can tell by the the texture of the site. Those are the old pages. And then, you know. It's just these buried menus you never would have looked for. So now, Unpaid Item Assistant opens after two days. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to think about it. The power of community. Yes. Uh, Another thing was people were talking about the post office is, is raising their prices again. Yes, on the 27th. A USPS. They, they do I it think they about, do it every year. Is it every two years? To do it. I mean, I don't think that, that it's on a specific schedule, but it seems like it's every year. I think they raise prices on certain classes of mail every year because not every single class of mail is going up. But I think every year they tweak it a little bit. Like first class stamps which I actually didn't realize they are 50 cents. I thought they were less than that. They're going to be 55 cents just wow. to mail a regular letter. So on the f- a forum, people were talking about the a different price changes and how it's going to affect, you know, people yeah. depending on how they ship. How's it? I don't know. I'm not paying stuff. attention because I have calculated shipping on everything. Right. Um, you know, there are some people who are like, oh, a flat rate envelope costs X, so I'll just put a flat rate of X. But then when the post office changes their prices, right. your price has Or not people changed. that ship for free, but then they are, they're actually putting right. the price of the uh, shipping right. in Into the, the item itself. The so item. if that changes, they have to change all their prices. But yeah, since we do calculated a shipping, it should it's not just, that big of a deal. It should just update. Yeah. On the 27th or yeah. whatever. I I was at the post office the other day and I bought a thing of forever stamps because then forever stamps stay, you know, relevant for first class no matter when you bought them. You could have bought them 10 years ago um, and you could still use them today. So I figured, oh, I, I'll buy a sheet before it goes up five cents Yeah, or five cents per. Buy a lot of them. 
There are people I have seen that that do that. It's because yeah. it is an investment. Arbitrage. It's not like that much of an investment, but it, like I said, if you bought like thousands of them like ten years ago, yeah. now that's an investment. Yeah. Um, and then what's interesting is I kind of forgot about this. So the Supreme Court made a, a ruling. Yes. That opened the the doors for states to to, to start charging in basically an internet sales internet tax sales tax on yeah. anyone who sells an item whether if you live in that state or not. So if right. someone buys something from Washington, right, and I live in uh, it's Virginia, I still have to pay a tax on that. Right. Um, the good news is, is that eBay is, I think, being very smart. They're like, we're taking care of it. So right now, right. there's a page, and we talked about it in the uh, forum. There's like, I think there's five or six states that actually have a, a law that just went into effect, I think January 15th or something. Yeah, like there's that. a handful, yeah. And eBay is now starting to, so if someone from like a Washington state right. buys a, a, a something, they, act, they, they make the buyer pay a tax. And then they right. give the money to the state. So right. we as Which a, is how a it seller, should be. we don't get the money, we don't touch it, we don't set the any we don't set the price. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure more states will come online with that. I noticed that when someone this week bought something and they were from Washington State, eBay I forget where it was, if it was on the page of like this item sold, or if it was a separate message where they said we're collecting sales tax for this person on behalf of Washington State. Like, I saw that. Mm. I also saw when I bought um, eBay shipping supplies, I don't know what state they're in, I had to pay sales tax on my zero dollar. Mm. <laughs> I had, you know, you use a coupon, so it's, right. so it's no money, but you have to pay the sales tax on, on it. A fifty dollars worth of stuff. One hundred and fifty dollars. So it was like it was like seven fifty or wow. eight dollars. I mean, you know, look. it's just inevitable. You can't. You get can argue it. whether it's bad or good. It is what it is. States have say they need the uh, money. I guess the good thing to me is it's. It's uh, even across right. the uh, network. So it's going to be. Uh, no one can be in a state where they can't charge a tax. It's just if you want to sell. And uh, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm assuming Amazon does that too. I don't know if Amazon gets They a, do because I feel like I bought stuff on Amazon and been charged tax. But like, yeah. I just, I guess everyone's fear was, was that we would have to collect the tax right. and then we oh would have God. to figure out. Who gets that? that I'm still crazy. a little unclear of like when we do our taxes in 2020, right. when all these taxes are being, you know, grabbed. Collected. Do we have yeah. to to say those taxes like got report paid, those or because to... we don't even touch it? That is nothing to do with us. I have a feeling that it's going to be like we don't even see it. Good. eBay is the pass through. Right. They collect it and they remit it right. to the state. I mean, that's that, that's huge. So that it's got to be that if, way. If it continues that way, then basically it's just something that the buyer pays to eBay. They deal with it, and we just continue to do our business. That would be houses. ideal. Because and then states get more money for you know schools and roads. And I mean, it's fine. I mean, else. sales tax is sales tax. To me, it's fine. I'm like whatever, but. It's the system to pay it right. that is scary for small businesses online because yeah. you're like, what? Yeah. How am I going to deal with this? Yep. So we'll see. So how good was our week or bad? I okay. Some people on the forum are like, my gut reaction to this week, and then they and then they do okay. their numbers. I know the a number. I don't think I don't. You do. So what is your gut reaction? My gut reaction is fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Okay, we, we we did about seventeen hundred. Okay. So that's better than my gut reaction. We need to make a thousand dollars a week gross. Yeah. If we make two thousand, we're really doing good. So we're a little bit better than good. So that's fine. But you know, it's just I feel like we're just back to like summertime. It's just normal, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Um. So a couple things we sold uh, that that you know I'll just um uh, mention because I think it was interesting. Kimono. We sold one for $150. Yes. We bought a bunch of kimonos from an estate sale. Which we've talked about. Yeah. Um, and I think I paid 
between eight and ten dollars each. And we went all in. We got like ten we of were them. Like, we'll take them all. Twelve of them or something, something like that. And, and they were just like, "What are you gonna do with these?" This is- and I think we've sold three of them so far for yeah, you know, between seventy five and one hundred and fifty, yeah, d- depending on. There so. were some that I took low offers because they were not in great shape. They right. had like you know right. damage to them. Yeah, I mean they aren't like antique. They're more just kind of like a vintagey. They're kind of like look like they're from the 80s i mean some of them look very classic and beautiful and some of them totally look 80s but you're like that's they're not it's like the old old yeah they're not very old uh we finally sold another i think i don't think we talked about a week ago we sold a a light you know a a lamp it's like this hanging lamp we've had it for so long and we had two of them and we sold the other one just it was so weird i i have had those for so long and then i sold two of them within a week of each other it's like those kind of items where you see them on the shelf and you're just like we should just throw get those rid away. of this. But, but you know what? They finally I sold, sold it for a hundred bucks. I bet we had those uh, for eight years. I don't even think it was. I no. I, I don't think it was that long. It, it was a long time. But it was six years, five or six years. Yeah, long time. Then because get them out of my it, house because we got it at an auction that doesn't even exist. It anymore. doesn't even exist anymore. So, really. uh, God. And then we sold some uh, luggage. We talked about it yep, before. Luggage. I feel like a luggage always does well. Uh, it takes up a lot, a lot of room. A lot of space, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's expensive to buy, like, a new set of uh, right. luggage. So if you can get, like, a nice... If you especially know the the size that now can fit above... Yeah. If you can get that size, like, you know, Samsonite or just some good brand. Yeah. Uh, Eagle Creek or something. It'll sell well. So we, we sold one for 100 bucks. I think these were more checked luggage. These were kind of large. Mm. They were large, like, rolly yeah. cases. They were That's a true. pain in the butt to ship because yeah. they're, like, I had to, like, wrap them. In. How do you uh, ship something like that? Okay, so we sold two in the last, like, month or so, which is great. One of them I wrapped in a thick plastic garbage bag. Like, it's almost like a poly mailer, but mm-hmm. it's like a thick. And then I just wrap it in tape, and that was fine. Yeah. Um, the second one, we had, we, uh, when we were in New York in August, we found this big roll of Tyvek on the street, which is amazing because that, I mean, <laughs> that's what a lot, like, USPS makes poly mailers out of Tyvek. Yep. It's really strong. This material. is the a woman I love. She- she got excited about finding a roll of Tyvek. In I was the trash. like, "Well, it looked like paper at first, yeah. and I was like, this is Tyvek. Yeah. We got to take it home." Yeah. So, so I this one I wrapped in Tyvek, and then I, you know, wrapped it up in tape too. Mm-hmm. So it, yeah, it, I think it got there. It's cool. fine. So good. Yeah. But and then everything else was just bread and butter. We we did oh, sell. Clothes. So we did sell a couple pieces of pottery, like plates. Several, several. And like little sugar bowls. I'm just like, I can't. It's yep. just like, I'm so happy when that stuff sells. I, part of our like ceramic cash was um, was these sugar bowls. Yeah. It, it was creamers and sugars. For some reason, these people had like three of each. Yep. I don't know why they had so many. But um it was some Japanese brand, but it was it was some like Western designer. Uh, but these sugar bowls sold for fifty dollars each to the same person, so yeah. it was a hundred dollar yeah. sale. I packed those like crazy. I was so like, we have Ugh. like three large, you know, each shelf is like six feet long, and like three or four <laughs> of them so full, of, and it seems like it never gets I know. less. Well, it never. Here's why: it never gets less because when we sell something off the shelf, I sort of like you know reorganize it so there's Mm -hmm. a space there for something else to go Uh, because we still are like buying little tchotchke ceramic little sugar bowls ashtrays so then you know when we're putting stuff away (laughs) it go you know like the shelf is just always full like mugs i've sold a few mugs last week and what i do is the shelves we have the the actual shelves are like this thick wire so one of the shelf, two of the shelves has mugs and they're hanging with S hooks from yep. the wire. So what I do is that was my idea. It's I love it. I could not love it more because you just look under and you find the mug. Before I had this really deep shelf and you, you I would have to, to take, take it all mugs out. out. Yeah. It was horrible. So, um, so what I do is I'll pull the mug out and then I'll take a mug from the front and put it 
on that hook so that there are always hooks in the front for me to put mugs that we just listed. Right. So I'm trying to like rotate because if you, if you take uh, something from the back, you can't see that there's a hook there. And you're like, oh, there's no place to. Yep. And those S hooks actually are not cheap. So I try to just not have to buy more. But yeah. So mugs do well for us. I mean, yeah. they're long tail for I mean, sure. You know, mugs, hats, those kind of just things. Just like, like bread and butter. Like You got to be careful with that stuff. But if you're patient, you know, it can sell. It can, yeah. Uh, you just have to. The other thing about the long tail too, just a side note here, is... We have a ton of mugs and we have a ton of hats. So it's volume and it's long tail. Yeah. So you have to be willing to store a lot of them yeah. and sit on them. Yep. So if you're not willing to do that, you're like, this is a bust. Yeah. You know, I have 20 mugs and you're like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have like I have like 120 mugs. Yep. And like, I don't even know how many hats. hats. 300, yeah. 400, so many hats. Yep. Like, I think that's why I'm amazed that guy, uh, his name is... Uh, it's Simon, and he's in Simon, San Francisco yeah. yes, area, yes. the Bay Area, and he he started his business with, I think, only hats. Mm-hmm. He's he's now expanded right. into other things. He finds it at yard sales, but he would be selling 30, 40 hats a week. So many. And when oh, when no. we would be selling three or four. Yeah. But he seemed to have a really good like he was selling like fifteen bucks. Like it was like a solid like. You know. number for him but also for the customer yeah i try to sell my hats at a reasonable price but not that low like i sold a hat last night for 20 bucks yep and i'm just like this is vintage it's cool there's not another one like but it. that goes to you know our argument we've always had is it better just to right. sell it for a smaller amount and sell a ton of and them sell a ton of them but then you have to always be finding them and replenishing them and how much work does it take to a list a fifteen dollar item, and you know, it's just uh, I don't know. I think the answer for us is just we just don't want to sell that low if we don't have to. I think when I'm selling stuff for low, I start to feel like I'll look at the invoice because I print out the invoices so I know what I'm packing and shipping and where it's going. And sometimes you know we'll sell something for like twelve ninety nine, and I'm like, oh, that yeah. is such a bummer. Right. So I think that our strategy is like instead of trying to sell stuff a lot of stuff at a low price yeah and always be filling up our store we would rather just fill up our store you know so we're at the eight thousand yeah 8, item 200. mark and we just will hold on to things so other people might have a thousand item store but they're selling a whole lot yeah volume so i don't know it's just it's whatever you want like this week our average price was 38 dollars. yep you know well, that's pretty good and we only sold think three things over a hundred so you know right our average price is not fifteen dollars it's more closer to 35 you know yeah so anyway well the other thing too is it's interesting we have make an offer on most of our store so you know i'm willing to take offers on things like i'll take 30 to 50 percent off sometimes depending on what it is so you know it's it's a toss-up where you're like I might take $15 for a hat. I sold this scarf that we found in the trash in New York over the summer. It was just this brown, gauzy scarf thing. <laughs> for some reason, I, I had it up for $25. That was in that box of stuff we got from the apartment? Yes. Like that yeah. big box it was in front my, of yeah. this apartment yeah. that we walked by. And um, uh, someone was like, can you do free shipping? And I was like, nope, but I'll send him a $20 offer. And the guy bought it. And, yeah. and you're just like, that's... You know, that's twenty dollars for a little scarf that has no brand. Yep. It's just a cool look. It's like how do they even find it? I don't you know, I have no idea. Things that don't have brands or I just, tags. It's just like someone's just, just like, I need a big gauzy scarf. You just have to hope for the people <laughs> who are willing to like scroll through it. and there are people like that. Like, yeah. Um, okay. Uh scavenge of the week. We did a little bit of scavenging at that one thrift store we I went to and we I think we, we got, did. Yes, we wait, did a little bit. I think we I bought one, one thing. Yeah, we only got one it was, thing. I bought, I bought one thing for a dollar. It yeah. was a solid brass um, candlestick yeah. holder, a Baldwin. And in some ways, that's I think a good thing. That's people have talked about this. We think we're just getting better at not being tempted to buy a bunch of junk. Like it's funny because we'll go, but we'll go to a thrift store too, and and I'll be like, oh, I'm not seeing anything, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh. There's that like yeah. we, that we went to that thrift store a few weeks ago. I think it was like 
right when we got back from Christmas or before that. It was before Christmas. And I was finding tons of stuff. I was like Royal Copenhagen, like fancy dance. You know, it just somebody dropped off some good stuff. And yeah. I was like, oh, this stuff's cheap enough. I'm just going to. I think we spent $60 that day. But oh, the, our helper that does uh, most of our photos, she's been sick. So we have kind of a backlog yeah. of stuff for her. So the a nice thing about, again, having that large inventory that we have is there isn't like a real hunger like we need to go yeah, get a I'm bunch like of stuff desperate. right now. Yeah. We have plenty of stuff in our store. It's selling. We have a good week or two of work for her already. Yeah. So I'm fine with just, you know, we have plenty of other things to do. I will say this, the the Marie Kondo method of tidying. I went through my closet. And just real quick, people have been talking about it on a Netflix Yes. There is a Japanese a woman that has this a system of organizing and she's written books. Yeah. And her name is Marie what? Kondo? K O N Kondi. Kondo? Kondi. I thought it was Kondo. Okay. Like I live in a condo, but it's with a K. Oh, huh, okay. Jay's gonna look it up. Um Kondo, you're right. Yeah. Uh anyway, so yeah, so and she's she's it's kind of like the anti hoarder, but like not angry at you, just like she's just Pick the stuff you love. Yeah. And, and then, then people most... understand that that means you got to get rid of junk. Well, I think what happens is people, well, her method is to dump everything out like on the bed or on the floor and be like, here's all your stuff. And you're like, right. People don't know. How people much who stuff are not hoarders realize, oh, I have way too much stuff. I haven't even touched this thing. I bought it. I never used right. it. And for us, we're like, I'll sell it on eBay. Yeah. And some people just give it to Goodwill. But so I gave away half my clothes because some of them were just thrift store clothes that I'm like, this is a nice shirt. It has no brand, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not even worth selling. But then I had some nice like blazers and just some nice sweaters that I'm just like, yeah, I got that sweater because it was nice, but I never wore it. But it's J. Crew, so yeah, yeah I'll sell it. I think the interesting thing about that show is they go into people's homes, and you know, and people are not hoarders; they're just regular yeah. middle class people. And these people have so much stuff. Yeah, especially people with kids; they just have like you know mm, yeah. years of stuff that pile on each other, and then they are giving stuff away. And I guess these are the people who are giving all that stuff away to the uh, thrift good. Stores. Well, like, yeah, it you see like. Boxes and boxes of stuff. Well, and a lot of it, like we were saying, they're like, this is brand new, but I never use it, so give it away. And right. then you go to the thrift store and you're like, nobody like, ever touched this. And like all these clothes, I'm like, how do you have 400 shirts? You know, like, <laughs> that's incredible Look, to me. Go in my mom's closet because she, yeah. although all her stuff is thrift stores, you know, yeah. all her stuff's from Savers. It's but nice stuff. It's but, but, you know, it, it is interesting too, just to see how emotional people get about yeah. this stuff yeah and it's very hard it's uh you know it it touches my heart you know people are very like about their house and their yeah. stuff and the memories they have yeah the memories and, and stuff. how stuff makes them feel better and how they don't want to get rid of stuff it's really interesting it's good though like i liked going through my clothes well i need to go through my actual clothing drawers as well but i they're pretty minimal there's almost nothing in my drawers um but i felt good going through the closet because I was just like, you know, there were things in there that I'm kind of like sentimental about, but I'm like, you know, this dress that I had from college, like it does not fit me anymore. Yeah. So someone else can have a cool vintage, whatever. Yeah. Sun I dress. guess I kind of did something too. I guess I didn't think about it because of her, but it's probably because it was in the air. Uh, back when we moved into our house, I bought a bunch of cast iron at a thrift stores, cast iron, Pots and ovens Stock pots and, sto and, and yeah, Dutch pans ovens. and just like you I just was had so you know, much of it. They're everywhere, right? Right. And honestly, I use we I use two, two all maybe the time, three. and then one as you know, it's like a little crock pot. The others I cleaned, I seasoned, and we're gonna sell the rest of them. I've sold a lot of cast iron that we haven't used before, like yeah. even just little. Cast iron's cool. Little one quart bean pot or yeah. whatever. I've sold that stuff for good money. I mean, the thing about cast iron that's really tough is um, it shatters like glass if right. you don't double box it, which sounds crazy because you're like, it's iron, but it's really heavy. So if, if it gets dropped, I've had two pieces in one month. This is years ago. 
just shatter in half. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the only thing about cast right. iron is you really have to pack yeah, it I well. Yeah, I mean, it's heavy, but it's actually not that strong. Right. I, I don't know how to describe because, that. Because it's just iron. It's not like steel where it's all like held together. Yeah, so... Just be careful of that if you're going through your cast iron. So customer issues, uh, we didn't have any issues, but we did get a couple of those uh, returns back that we had talked about where over it's Christmas, some of our m- most expensive items were being it returned and they finally came in the mail and we had I to, had to return a, them. What a three hundred dollar return and then a one twenty dollar. What was the three hundred? Oh, that was the Burberry. Yeah. We sold a Burberry trench coat. Right. Guy just said it didn't fit. Yep. Not anybody's fault. And three hundred dollars, so. and then and then a pair of one hundred and twenty five dollar Ferragamo men's boots. Yeah, just she actually said that was an inad, but since I have free item returns, not as described. Right, she was like, item not as described, more worn than the photos showed, which is weird. I'm like, well, I think that possible. Uh, a Sonia on the a forum is really good to remind people the best way to handle that now, since eBay does not allow you to argue anything until right. you get the item back. Yeah. And then if you don't argue it, if you simply just say, I don't agree. Right. And you just return the the cost of the item. Right. But you don't do, do the original shipping. And then that's it. And then the buyer can, I guess, then come back and argue that they should get it. Yes. If they don't argue So it, here's the deal. You can... I believe that you can only do that if you have free returns turned on. Oh, yeah? I think that is only an option if you have free returns. Okay. So, supposedly, eBay will back you up if you have free returns turned on. Hmm. If the buyer says, I dispute this case, they basically open a case against your case, eBay should reimburse them for their original shipping with no effect to you really? that's what i've seen okay. and and that's what i believe is true what the perk is for right. a free return got it well it's good to hear that there's an actual perk i mean i that's what i've experienced <laughs> yeah. and i've many times disputed it because i'm like nope yeah. i showed the photos you yeah. know so but anyway those anyway. those those are more expensive uh Returns are painful. They're very painful, They especially when they come all at once. Yeah. Uh, okay, things we learned in the uh, forum. We talked about a bunch of stuff, but one interesting thing is there is a thread on the forum where a Canadian, he, uh, uh, Winchester38 is yeah, I was his say it's handle, Winchester, right? um, but he just quit his job. So he's been talking about it, Amazing. and he's actually been documenting his uh, process of like, getting store already and his finances and he's going to sell him him and his partner are selling their house and going to move closer to i think family and into a cheaper part of the country uh so he just kind of pulled it amazing so we'll put that a a link on the forum if i remember yeah every every, swear to god every week we're like in the podcast we'll put a link in the thing <laughs> totally Sorry. forget every yeah. time just just ask us if i like, forget and you're like where's the link please tell me yeah. and then i'll put the link up there yeah got a but, lot of a lot, lot of stuff going on here it's interesting the first thing he's done so is is just hit the road like him mm. and his partner traveling and, it's uh, so cool and uh, that's always a good feeling when like it's you're like, I don't have to go back. Oh, my God. I don't have to. I love those stories. Yeah. It, 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 like, reinvigorates me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. I get all excited for them. It's I'm like, like, yes. It's like a new person enjoying the a network. Scavenger you know? dreams. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love, I love that people are putting those stories on the forum. Yeah. Like, there are a couple stories on there of people making, like, journals where they're like, okay, this is my goal for the next six months. And, you know. Yeah. It's it's very inspiring. Okay, uh, let's answer the questions that people sent in. Okay, you can always call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. And our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hey, Jay. Hey, Ryan. This is Kenya calling from Texas. I would like to know your opinion on a message that I'm going to send my buyer pertaining to a bundle of books that I sold for the wrong price. I have a five bundle book of self-help books. 
including a brand new uh, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins in there that I sold today for $3.99, $3.99. And it should have been listed at $13.99, but somehow that one didn't make it on there. It might have been during a time that I was listing you know, several things back to back and I just was rushing. I don't know. So uh, I'm missing out on $10 and I ended up actually having to pay an extra dollar for shipping because um, it wasn't weighed properly. The buyer did pay three sixty eight dollars to um, media mail, but again, I always double check my shipping weight before it goes out so it's not missing postage. So I wrote to the buyer, thank you for your purchase. You scored a great deal. As this bundle should have been $13.99, not $3.99. No worries. As a seller aiming for excellence, I honor your purchase price and your books are packed and ready for shipment. Uh, do me a favor. Please remember to leave feedback. Positive feedback helps me become a recognized uh, recognized as a trusted seller on eBay. Thanks again for your purchase, and I hope that I may serve you again. So my uh, my question to you guys is, do you think that message will help me get the feedback? Do you think it's like super unnecessary and petty? Um, or do you think it might actually have like a negative effect? Like maybe, I don't know, they might leave bad feedback or even cancel the order. If they cancel the order, I might actually feel better. No, I don't. No, I won't. Because I do want the sale. These books have been up for several months, but... Uh, it just bugs me like, ah, $10. Anyways, let me know what you think. Am I being super petty? Do you think I can at least get good feedback out of it since I lost money on the sale? And that's it. Thanks a bunch. Bye. Yeah. So I think we've all done that where something's been a, a mispriced. I mean, $10, a difference is not a big deal to fret about. Um, I think your a message is fine. Honestly, though, I don't know if you need to really say that it was a, a, a mistake uh, because, honestly, they probably don't care. But uh, I mean, not a big deal. And the, but it sounds really like a pro. I mean, very nice I mean, nice your message. email is very professional. Uh, I feel very unprofessional because I'm like, don't <laughs> send messages like that yeah. ever. But I don't know if you're just starting out and you want feedback from everyone and you're like, let's build up my feedback score. Then I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, as a buyer, I buy on eBay all the time just for myself, our household and our rentals. I ignore any emails like that. I don't care. I, I leave feedback for everyone. I'm a right. good feedback lever. But I feel um, like the people that leave feedback will do it no matter what. Because and, they want to. And the people who don't leave feedback, I don't will never leave feedback. There is nothing to push them to give feedback. It's like know? it's like feedback on Amazon. Right. Have you ever left feedback on Amazon? Right. No. Yeah. I haven't. I've left reviews for yeah. things. And but <laughs> And the way I always tell people is the way I shop on eBay or Amazon, I think it's the way a lot of people do. I just do a search for the item I want and then I choose it by basically price or quality. I'm not right. really like, oh, I this remember seller. this yeah. store I bought it from. Right. It's only if I'm buying like printer ink and I'm like, this is the guy that sells the best printer ink. So I'm always going to go back again and again. Mm, yeah. Other than that, every purchase is like a brand new thing. Yeah. So I don't think it hurts to like try and build a, a relationship with people. But I don't know. We don't run the kind of business where we expect a lot of return customers, you know. Okay, that is it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discussed and to join the conversation on the forum. You can call and leave a question on our voicemail line. Again, the phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us uh, an audio file, thescavengerlife at gmail.com. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video currently being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to our Patreon, which helps support us for as little as $5 a month. You can subscribe to us for free through iTunes and YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. And we are ending this podcast in, in three, three, two, two one. one. Bye.